South Africa. Let's get one thing straight. You think you know Julius Malema? You think he's just the guy who stirs chaos in parliament? The man who throws his voice into every battle? What if I told you there's a side of Malema you've never seen? A side so strategic, so calculated, it'll make you question everything you thought you knew about him? Let's dig into this. No fluff. Just the truth about Malema's real game. Bro, in December, I found out Julius Malema's got a spot there. I went there for the first time. Where? Slaking or something. Where? Slacking in Sishiko. Yeah, this is hometown. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. It's bangs, bro. It's the best sound I've heard in the country. Hey! He's got the best sound, dog. For real? Yo, 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 yo. Because he's a DJ also, right? Yeah. Mm. See, he plays as well, so you I assume you take that serious. Yeah. Nah, man, beautiful. But yeah, it was my first time there, man. Slacking. Beautiful. Yeah, it's packed, 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 packed. Shit, shout out, man. This isn't just about a tavern or a sound system. It's about the unexpected layers to Malema's life. You see, critics want you to think he's some untamed populist with no focus beyond political theatrics. But here's a man who's invested in his community, who pours quality into everything he touches, from entertainment to politics. He doesn't just lead rallies. He's a businessman, a visionary. The so-called tavern isn't just a tavern. It's a symbol of his commitment to his roots. And even more, a place for people to gather, to celebrate, and to feel seen. When was the last time a politician did that? Now, it gets even more interesting. People have this habit of dismissing Malema as a loose cannon. But for anyone who thinks he's got no grounding, who questions his intelligence, let me give you a reality check. You must tell them Julius Malema built a church of Christ in Sishiu, where he comes from, in honor of his mother. There is a house of the Lord that I've built with my own hands. And I invited Zuma to go and open that church with me. And Zuma came along. Now, those who have a mind of a rat will not remember that I've built a church, not only one, but many churches, many churches, many churches. I've made a contribution to make sure that this religion of Christianity prosper as any other religion. So I don't have anything except that myself, I'm a Christian. My religion is Christianity. My church is Sishiro Baptist Church. I pay my services there every month so that my funeral can have a pastor. I don't want Mbuisen to be borrowed to come and make a prayer at my funeral. See, that's Malema for you. Not the stereotype, not the sound bites they throw around. He's a man who has quietly funded places of worship, standing by his faith and his roots. And don't mistake this as a PR stunt. He invited Zuma, yes, but he didn't do it to score points. He did it because his faith is part of who he is, and he honors that. Some will say, but what about VBS? What about corruption? Well, here's a challenge to those critics. Malema's been investigated, scrutinized, and yet, no charges, not one conviction. If this man, who's got both the president and the opposition against him were guilty. Do you really think he'd be walking free today? Or does the absence of evidence suggest something else? That the accusations against him are nothing but noise designed to drown out the truth? I'm a businessman. I'm in business. I thought and, you received your and, monies and, from and charities, not No, from I'm in business. And uh, uh, scrutinizing salaries of people who are not in government, it, it must be very unethical of you. You can't be happy to, for people to parade your pay sleep. But even you have, the, you even, have, you have per, even the yeah. salary you are referring to is incorrect. So my salary has got nothing to do with you because I'm a private citizen who was working for a, lead, a non governmental were, were organization. A leader of but the I'm not African your leader. I'm not your leader. You those were, that I lead leader of the those that I lead will tell me how much do you earn, how do you make your living? Mm. Your salary my salary mm -hmm. has got nothing to do with you in the same way, I will never ask you of your salary but, and how you make your you money. But if you have influence, if you have influence over, over government entities, and you're the leader of the African National, or a leader of the African National Congress Youth League, surely it becomes. You have never to the tested that influence. That's what you talk about with your friends over a bottle of something. <laughs> it's an unfounded <laughs> allegation of influence. You can't prove it. So, do you, so, or do you not do, have influence as the president of the NCC? No, I don't have influence. When yeah. you look at people walking, yeah. you don't look at how they walk and conclude that this one is very influential.
test the influence. That the influence this be is the gist of the accusations against you in your criminal trial, that you used your influence to, get, to push money away from uh, legitimate people who might do the work to Let's companies test that... Them. Here's where the genius of Malima shines. People don't get it. They see him out there, challenging authority, calling for accountability, and they assume he has something to hide. But what Malema is saying here is more than just about his salary. It's a reminder that he's a private citizen, a businessman, who has crafted his own financial path. He's built a financial foundation separate from the state. Why? Because he knows the dangers of depending on government salaries alone. Let's be clear. This man is no fool. He's studied the game and set himself up with a network of family trusts, the Ratanong and Kapano trusts to ensure his financial security while avoiding entanglements with the state. His money? It's his business. And by keeping it private, Malema safeguards his independence from those who might try to control him through financial strings. South Africa, this isn't just a man who's building wealth or securing his future. It's a leader who's challenging the system and keeping his financial freedom intact while doing so. And why does that matter? Because a financially free leader is a leader who can't be bought, who can't be silenced, and who can't be swayed. Malema's independence is part of his strategy. His financial setups, his family trusts, his private ventures, they're all pieces in a larger game plan to ensure he's untouchable by those who wish to see him fail. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, VBS Bank. Every time Julius Malema's name comes up, you'll hear people mumbling, what about VBS? But here's the real talk. Every accusation, every insinuation about VBS has been investigated and no charges have been brought against him. Think about that. If Malema had truly exploited VBS funds, don't you think his political enemies would have torn him down by now? The fact that he stands, despite every effort to discredit him, should tell you something about the man's resilience. And, yes, his genius. Here's where we go deeper, comrades. Malema isn't just a figurehead. He's a tactician, a strategist who's seen through the complexities of South African politics and decided that it's time for a radical shift. He's aligning the EFF with emerging resistance forces like the ATM and MKP to counter the ANCDA coalition, a move that isn't just about shaking things up, but about giving a voice to the millions who feel left behind, who believe the systems stacked against them. This is the coalition of people who refuse to be controlled by the elite, and Malema is a pivotal part of that. So, to those who doubt Malema's intelligence, to those who underestimate him because of his vocal, unapologetic style, think again. This is a man who has calculated every move, built institutions, funded community spaces, and secured his independence. He's positioned himself not just as a leader, but as a symbol for a South Africa that is fed up with empty promises promises, with corruption, and with an ANCDA coalition that cares more about staying in power than helping the people. Malema isn't just a politician. He's a force, unfiltered, relentless, and yes, a secret genius who's been hiding in plain sight. This man has set up a future where he cannot be easily toppled, where he can continue to speak truth to power, shielded by his independence, his faith, and his unbreakable bond with the people he serves. The question now is, South Africa, are we ready to recognize this genius, or will we keep letting noise and distraction blind us to his true potential. Share your thoughts, comrades. Have you been surprised by what Malema has done? Do you believe he's been misunderstood, underestimated? Let us know in the comments. And if you're ready to see more, join us here, where we bring you the truth behind the headlines.